And by UKG. UKG is a partner that delivers HR, pay, time, and culture solutions designed to help build a great workplace for everyone. UKG, our purpose is people. And by Make Me Smart, a podcast from Marketplace that digs into the latest in business, culture, and tech news to help make sense of the complex issues that affect us all. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. Now thoughts on the legacy of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., killed by an assassin in Memphis on this day in 1968. His four children have worked to carry on his vision through the King Center in Atlanta with a focus on nonviolent social change. That's a legacy that includes safeguarding Dr. King's intellectual property. Marketplace's special correspondent Lee Hawkins filed this reflection. We've got some difficult days ahead, but it really doesn't matter with me now. Because I've been to the mountaintop. In his last speech, a determined Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. gave his prophetic I've been to the mountaintop speech to striking Memphis sanitation workers. He urged his followers to keep marching, though conceding that he might not live to see the progress. His expectation was based on years of being violently attacked, having his house bombed, and other assaults. Dr. King was assassinated the next day, April 4th, 1968 while standing on the balcony of the Lorraine Motel. King's awareness of his mortality made him think about the future financial security of his family. My father was a public figure, but he was a private citizen. Bernice King is Dr. King's youngest child and CEO of the King Center in Atlanta. 56 years since her father's death, she and her siblings have fought to maintain access to her father's words, especially her late brother Dexter. She reflected on her brother's work at a news conference following his death. Daddy protected his own intellectual property. He copyrighted and went to court over the I Have a Dream speech. And that we're following in his stead to adequately protect it. The Martin Luther King Jr. estate is worth nearly $10 million today. However, there's no reliable way to account for the cost of the violence and the trauma the families endured. Isaac Newton Ferris, the son of Dr. King's late sister, Christine King Ferris, tells me about some of the painful moments that followed Dr. King's assassination. Hardest death for any of us to deal with was the murder of my grandmother. She was the big mama in terms of our family. She was looked at it by all of us as a loving, giving person. I asked him if he was ever afraid as a child. I was because there were a couple of instances, a few times when literally the police came to my elementary school and just to, to say to the principal and to the teachers, look, there, you know, there's been a, a, a threat made against uh, the family and not just Dr. King. You know, the threat is beyond them, and it's affecting the kids. The family was often under FBI surveillance, especially in 1963, after King's iconic I Have a Dream speech. Still, Mr. Newton Ferris doesn't hold the government wholly responsible for the family's trauma. We looked at it more as elements of the government. J. Edgar Hoover was an element of the government. But so was the Supreme Court that ruled in Brown versus Board of Education. So was the American Congress and the American Senate with no black senators and only five black congressmen that passed the Civil Rights Act and the Voting Rights Act. For the King descendants, inheriting a brand that promotes nonviolent social change and racial unity has come with some pretty heavy burdens. It has an inimitable place in the ongoing story of the United States. I'm Lee Hawkins for Marketplace. Lee is the author of the forthcoming book, Nobody's Slave, How Uncovering My Family's History Set Me Free. The book will follow his podcast series, What Happened in Alabama, which explores the impact of racial violence on his own family. Find out more on our website, marketplace.org. In New York, I'm David Brancaccio. You're listening to the Marketplace Morning Report. APM, American Public Media.